We are here for retail wrap number 30, and who would have thought we'd made it to 30, but we definitely have. So it's exciting stuff ahead. We're actually week nine in Corona Rush. Things seem to be getting a little bit more controlled here in Australia. And let's face it, who wouldn't want to live in Australia right now? The safest place in the world, specifically South Australia. Oh, maybe Tasmania, oh, maybe WA, but let's say South Australia, safest place in the world. Let's get into it. So peanut butter wars, can you do like a, like a battle scene? In the battle of David and Goliath, we have bigger peanut butter here, and we have craft peanut butter here. So Australian owned and US owned. Bega won a federal court ruling over the use of the trademark yellow lid and yellow labels, which it puts on its peanut butter jars. This has been a long running battle, which started in 2017 when Bega purchased Kraft subsidiary Mondelez Australia, formerly Kraft Foods. Both parties went back and forth suing each other over the distinctive peanut butter trade dress. So Bega are now exclusively entitled to be able to use the yellow lid and the yellow label and call themselves Bega peanut butter. Most people in Australia would know it as Kraft peanut butter. And the reality is probably none of them know what the name is, but they definitely know what the look of this iconic peanut butter product is. So is this a classic case of buyer's remorse and then actually want to buy again? Sorry, Kraft. Goliath has definitely lost this battle. It's got their peanuts in a jam. Potify, well, it looks like things are getting very interesting with the digital platforms. And the main man, the one of the guys I follow most, and if you're not following Joe Rogan, you should be listening to his podcast. It was a comedian, an MMA fighter, as all of a sudden has become a big sensation in the land of podcasts. So Joe Rogan has done an exclusive deal with Spotify. Spotify is looking to grow their podcast platform and will be launching Spotify videos. They are looking to compete against the big boys like YouTube. And this could be a massive blow to YouTube considering Joe Rogan gets a million views a day on his YouTube channel. And wow, it is a million a day. I want maybe a million in a year, I think I'd be happy. <laughs> the Joe Rogan experience is beginning in September with Spotify, but what that really means is he is taking all of his content. He's done about 1,500 podcasts that range from two hours to five hours. It's a hell of a lot of content he's ripping off YouTube and he's putting it all exclusively with Spotify. I'm a massive fan of this move. It puts a massive value on it. The deal was reportedly worth $100 million. That's right, $100 million to put his content and his new content on Spotify. Spotify are trying to grow their Spotify account. Most of you know that through music. They're now going into video. And there's no doubt Spotify is having a bit of a play at YouTube here, thinking that there's plenty to go by. Is $100 million a lot of money? Well, when they announced that Joe Rogan was going exclusive, and his deal was about $100 million, the share price of Spotify went up $5 billion. That's right, that's $5 billion on the announcement that Joe Rogan's coming to their platform. Gary Vee called it out a long time ago. There's no doubt people that are at the top of the food chain in whatever industries do pack the weight. Joe Rogan is definitely up there at the top of the food chain and he is taking all of his content and putting it somewhere else. It shows you the value of content and it truly shows you the value of having people that are following you, whether they're subscribers on YouTube, people following you on LinkedIn, it shows the value of that and it shows the value that a business is putting into it. And one of those businesses being Spotify, they clearly can see the value in Joe Rogan. Maybe they see the value in Joe Rogan a little bit more than YouTube did. Hey YouTube, if you're looking for your next big podcast star, you know, it's my podcast channel, uh, Ducks Don't Go Coffee. Sorry, LinkedIn, I might be bought. Now we've all heard of Netflix and Chill and I reckon I was one of the last people to actually know what this means. But KFC and Chill is taking it to a new level. For a lot of people, it's been a very stressful time and people have had a lot of time to reflect on themselves and what is going on in the world. Maybe trying some meditation and some yoga. And what about some finger licking good vibes? <laughs> I'm 
That is pretty good. KFC have released KF Chill, a new path to mindfulness. Sit back, relax, chill out with the sounds of frying chicken, sizzling bacon, and simmering gravy. <laughs> Holy sh! I've got to be quiet because I'm in the supermarket. Holy sh! It's amazing. I started listening to it and dad walked into my office and he goes, what the hell is that noise? And it was the oil fryer from KFC in the background. Dad, he, he, is, he is KFC's number one secret fan. He keeps it quiet, but it's unreal. So the sound of bacon, it's mesmerizing. It takes you to another place like, mm -hmm. Domino's ahead of the curve. Since we're talking about fast food, specifically pizza, one of the most searched terms over the COVID-19. Now, they have always been a little bit ahead of the times and there's no doubt we've had their beautiful pizzas before and they've been delivered in unusual things like they were the first ones to do the pizza delivery in the drones. They got their DRU, which is their Domino's robotic unit, which apparently was cruising around the streets of Queensland. And they've had various other Domino's digital platforms that you can order from. For any of you that use the app from Domino's, it's quite clever. You can see how long your pizza is away. You can actually see it being cooked. They were the first ones to start doing that. And Domino's have always been ahead of the curve. They always seem to make media for whatever the reason and good on them. So their CEO, Don Midge, has come out with what they are claiming as the next big thing for Domino's. He has predicted there's going to be a whole lot more home delivery. What a letdown. I was hoping something that I'd be getting pizzas delivered in space or you know, the next person to get shot up to space so I can get a pizza from New York from Domino's and it'd be sent in an aircraft. Home delivery, no joke. There's a lot more home delivery going, maybe because people are too scared to leave their house. But did Domino's not launch this in 1983 when they first started doing home delivery? Well, I say everything's a cycle, isn't it? Just goes around like this, just like the circular economy. So there you have it, Retail Wrap 30. Plenty going, make sure you leave some comments down below so we can answer them. Or even like and share if you actually like it. And don't forget, go over to my YouTube channel and like that as well. We put out a little bit different content on the different platforms and we definitely want to make sure you're involved. So until next time, bye for now. Is $100 million a lot of money? Paul Lapp, one of the first guys.